All right, hi everyone. Thank you for coming out uh, this morning. Um, the company is called Explority. Uh, what I want to do though first is take you back to your school day and think back to when your teacher told you that you were going on an out of classroom experience. It could have been a band trip, it could have been a debate trip, it could have been even uh, you know, a trip to the arch, but imagine how that made you feel and how excited you were, and I'm sure even as an adult, you can look back and, and remember those, those experiences, or if you have kids, you can imagine you know, what it feels like. And studies actually show that out of classroom experiences bene significantly benefit students personally, socially, and even academically. The thing that people don't realize, though, is how much work goes into creating and managing these out-of-classroom experiences for the teachers and all the different you know, people involved. And that's basically where we come in. So our platform, Explority's mission, is to help educators and students get out of the classroom and experience the world. The thing is, though, like I said, there's a lot of roadblocks that currently exist to have these types of experiences happen and have them happen more often. So one of them is just the hours of work uh, that it takes for teachers before, during, and after. Obviously, the more complex it is, the farther away it is from you know, the home base, from the school, it gets more complicated if it's multiple days, if there's you know, uh, lodging and, and rooming lists and busing lists and even flights, it get very, very complicated. And talking with teachers, they say that it takes upwards of 150 hours of work for a domestic trip and it could take up to 500 hours uh, of work just for the teacher, and I'm not even including the what you know what it takes for the student tour operator. But it's very a lot of work. Uh, it's very uh, costly. It can be very expensive. A lot of times the teachers uh, will try to find uh, you know a quote from their local tour, uh, tour operator or, or travel agent. They're not able to really have a full uh, understanding of what uh, uh, the best the best prices are. Um, the programs themselves are funded by the school, and a lot of times the, the teacher needs to be able to prove to the administration and other teachers that the trip they're taking to Orlando isn't just a fun trip to Disney World, but there's actually some educational component to it. So all those different aspects uh, sort of go into it, and these are some of the typical complaints uh, that we have heard from teachers uh, when it comes to these types of out-of-classroom experiences. So there's a lot of different apps, websites, email chains that, that, they, that exist, before the experience, like I said, with the tour operator, uh, just to find uh, a quote, they have to literally call them up. It's sort of like you know the 90s when you have to call up your, your, your tour, uh, your travel agent uh, to get a quote. And it's a lot of work, it's very inefficient, and also the parents and students today really want intuitive technology. And that's really you know our, the question, why now? Why are we focused on this problem? Uh, a, it's underserved, but also more and more teachers, more parents today are millennials. And millennials understand the value of experiences over things. And this is the type of, uh, these are the type of experiences that are really once in a lifetime for, for students, for kids. And we expect the parents will continue to uh, fund these types of experiences because they understand the value that it brings uh, to their kids. And just in the US alone, this market is $5.6 billion. Uh, in the rest of the world, obviously you're talking about you know, China, Europe, South America, these are huge markets and it's only growing as uh, you know, people really understand that in today's world, to stay competitive you have to be international, you have to, you have to go outside of your, your little bubble. So that's really where we come in. Explority makes it simple for educators to manage these kinds of classroom experiences, uh, streamlining a lot of the different processes that you know, in the past or even currently, uh, involve a lot of different, um, a lot of different paper checks and paper forms and back and forth. And these are some of our early customers, uh, nonprofit organizations that actually run educational experiences. And saying that how much time that Explorer you save them. So it's a little hard to see here, but 30 to 40 percent of the time, it's a game changer. Uh, save days worth of time. So. There's the logistics aspect of it, there's the educational content that they can add, and there's also the communication they can have between all the different stakeholders uh, that are involved. So our platform really serves as that central hub for all the different uh, stakeholders involved, which obviously include the teacher, the educator, the parents, the students, but then also the school administration, 
any vendors that might be working with, different sponsors that might be sponsoring uh, the experience. And really what we're, what we're going after with our platform is to have intuitive collaboration Yeah, okay. I'll Intuitive collaboration. I'll grab some of that. <laughs> Automated work. <laughs> Automated workflows. Uh, and really, and really I, save everyone a lot of time and effort. Yeah. So, good thing I have a loud voice. So, already while we've been in beta, uh, Explority has over 10,000 users. We have over 75 schools, uh, both K-12 and higher uh, institution, uh, higher education institutions. <laughs> More than 1,000 group experiences have gone to the platform because uh, the educators and the organizations are able to collect money through the platform, more than $2.5 million has actually gone through the platform. We already have customers from coast to coast in the US and also even internationally in South Africa uh, and Israel. So what I want to do right now is give you a, a quick introduction to Explority with an explainer video that we made and it'll give you uh, a good understanding. So, you put together student trips. Chances are you're spending countless hours planning, organizing, and managing to try to give your students a fantastic experience. The time and frustration of juggling multiple files, paper checks, permission forms, and back and forth emails can quickly add up. And with costs going up and teachers' workloads increasing, time and money matter more than ever. So start working smarter, not harder. Introducing Explority the ultimate smart, easy-to-use group experience management platform to handle your student trips, all in one place. Explority helps you throughout the entire life cycle of your trip. Use our marketplace to find the perfect experience from top-rated student tour operators with other teachers' reviews, browse existing trip options, or easily create your own plans and receive competing quotes. When it's time to get students and parents on board, Say goodbye to messy email chains and use our awesome group engagement app. In one dashboard, Explority lets you create and instantly send interactive forms and documents to students and parents for quick collaboration. Collect and manage payments effortlessly with automated invoicing and optional online payments. Put together educational content and multimedia related to the trip for students to learn and enjoy. The best part? Get an instant look anytime on exactly where things stand. It couldn't be easier. Receive competing quotes for the best prices. Save days worth of time with automated processes and create amazing experiences for your students. So that's a little bit of a background uh, on us and if we sort of break apart what you just saw, there's two components to our platform. One of them is the, uh, the second part here, which is the group engagement app that already exists, that's in use with uh, schools and, and, and different edu educational institutions, uh, that has all the different aspects to basically manage and organize the experience. And then what also you saw in the video was the other part, which was the network of teachers and uh, vendors that we're actually building out right now, which is the left part here, which basically gives the teacher uh, the network for teachers that give them, you know, they can share itineraries and uh, ideas and places uh, and educational content related to those trips. Uh, so you can imagine, you know, a trip to Washington DC, they could, instead of every teacher having to recreate the wheel, and then also be able to have a marketplace with different vendors. Uh, so whether it's student tour operators or, uh, you know, if it's a short field trip here in town to the Arch or the Science Center, uh, be able to uh, have everything happen much much easier. So uh, looking at revenue streams, uh, we spent a lot of time sort of really understanding uh, what would make the most sense for a product like this, for a market like this. Obviously teachers uh, have very little budget uh, themselves. Uh, so really what we did was uh, make Explority free for educators to use uh, for any type of experience they want. Uh, and the way we make money is through the transaction fees that parents pay for these experiences. So just to give you an example, uh, we're already working with uh, student tour operators are using our platform. They're giving teachers the ability to use this technology for free. And uh, the average uh, 
cost of a you know a, a big trip like this is around twenty thousand dollars, around fifty people. Uh, so if you start adding those up, it's significant uh, transaction fees. Also, with the marketplace, uh, we're adding uh, the ability for uh, the vendors themselves to get new leads. So a teacher can go in, type in what they're looking for, and then we get a commission from that. Uh, there's also the ability for parents to buy different types of keepsakes for the experience. So obviously this isn't necessarily relevant for every single kind of field trip and experience, but definitely for some of the ones that are more uh, memorable. Uh, already through the platform, you can create different types of photo books and things like that. And the school, uh, the school or the teacher uh, can receive, you know, 10% uh, from the proceeds of that. Also, we're planning on having advertising from these different types of vendors to reach the teachers that are in the database. Uh, and then this, the last part here, which is a little bit longer term, uh, but we're actually following the lead of a lot of different ed tech companies where they give away their core product for free and then they have a premium subscription tier for schools or for districts. Uh, so that's actually, uh, we've already started talking with superintendents uh, here in town uh, that have mentioned that you know having a platform like this to be able to oversee all the different things that are happening across the school or across the, on the district level uh, really helps them out you know, with risk control. We've talked with a number of different schools that say that, you know, a big problem for them is when, you know, a class is, is out or a, te a teacher takes students out uh, of the school, a parent or maybe there's an emergency that happens and someone calls in the secretary, they have no idea what's happening. Then they have to start digging through papers, they have to start making phone calls, it's all a big mess. So this really gives everyone uh, much more peace of mind. And that's really uh, these uh, four aspects here where the district is able and the school is able to have different sub-organizations, as we call them, uh, have different permissions, have different roles, so a district could have different schools and those schools could have different departments or however they want to sort of organize that uh, and have one organized place to have all the different forms they need to fill out, uh, all the, the uh, you know, information on, on financials and, and, and be able to have the control and insights then uh, for the future. So I wanted to also mention our founding team. Uh, we have a very uh, unique uh, team in that we are all very diverse. I know diversity is a big word now, and I think age diversity is also something important uh, that is not as much talked about. Uh, being able to have people from different age ranges, with different experiences, uh, with different viewpoints on different problems, uh, I think really contributes, and I think it's something that you're going to see more of in the future. Um, I know as a, for a fact that you know, if I would have started a company with two other guys my age, we wouldn't have been able to, you know, go through as many uh, problems and solutions as we as we do now, just based on experience and and and, and different viewpoints. Like I said, so uh, just a little bit about us. Uh, I'm Alan. I'm the CEO. Uh, I actually graduated from uh, Mizzou, from University of Missouri, uh, a few years ago. Uh, I majored in computer science and journalism, and I minored in Chinese. So I have some I have experience in tech in, in China and in Israel. Uh, our CTO Elad actually graduated from WashU. He has a PhD uh, from WashU in electrical computer engineering, uh, and he uh, is very uh, technical. So he's able to take care of that aspect. And then Saul here, Dr. Gil Saul, Saul Gilboa, our head of strategy and business development, brings a lot of strategic and management experience. Uh, he worked at BJC, community health and wellness, and really able to bring that broader view of, of uh, you know, organizational management. So uh, one last thing I want to show you here is another video. This is actually a testimonial video that we, that we made this past week uh, from one of our uh, teachers here in town, uh, one of our early teachers that used it this past spring. Uh, with, uh, a, she took a group of students to Chicago. So I'll uh, let you show this and then be happy to answer any questions. My name is Nicole Voss, and I am a theater teacher at Parkway Central High School. When you're organizing a trip, it can be very, very difficult, challenging, overwhelming. For short day trips, it usually takes about 120 hours. For international trips, about 500 hours to plan. Paperwork and signatures required, and all the phone calls back and forth between the travel agent, myself, to parents, to Excel sheets, 
working with Explority to organize my trip to Chicago was one of the best experiences that I ever had. I would say Explority saved me at least 75% of my workload time. My parents loved the convenience of Explority to be able to pay online with their credit card. I think my students really enjoyed the app as well. They could see my push notifications to them, they could see the agenda, and see exactly where we were going. Explority was helpful in this out-of-classroom experience, more helpful than putting a lot of little pieces together because it had everything in one place. The more opportunities that I can provide for my students, the more successful and better they're going to become. The more I can educate them outside of the, of the high school setting, that's what's going to educate them and become better. So I want to provide as many opportunities as I can for my students. I would definitely recommend Explority to other teachers. Thank you. So real quick, I, I do want to mention uh, uh, a little bit about sort of where we are now in terms of development. So like I said, uh, we're working on a few different aspects of the product as well. We're, we, it was really important for us to uh, stay away from investment. We've been bootstrapped up until now, and it was really important for us to stay away from investors until we really felt like we had a product and some semblance of product were to fit. Uh, so now that we feel like we're in that territory, uh, we're starting to talk to a number of different investors here in town and also elsewhere. And uh, yeah, we're happy to open it up to any questions. How are you getting to teachers right now? Are you going to like the teaching association or just people you know? So uh, up until now, it's been basically word of mouth uh, and you know, teachers here in the area. Uh, originally, we started out, the product was more for uh, uh, big nonprofit organizations that were organizing of types of group experiences. So uh, our early sort of way to cover a lot of schools uh, was through that. Um, now we're actually working with a number of different tour operators. Our strategy um, is to actually partner with student tour operators. Uh, so for example, we already have a partnership with uh, a student tour operator based out of New York that they have 300 uh, different uh, school trips a year. And that obviously connects us now with 300 teachers that you know have an account, and their students have accounts, and they can start using it with you know other other uh, types of experiences they're organizing. Uh, so their account is their account, and they can basically use it for for those kinds of things. So in our strategy and in our financial projections, things like that, what uh, our plan is to really reach you know 10, 20, 30 student tour operators at the outset. That'll also give us the uh, marketplace, like I mentioned, for the student tour operators themselves to get more leads, so it turns into a win-win type of opportunity. Uh, but then also with different uh, teacher associations, um, different state level uh, organizations that, you know, whether it's a debate uh, thing or a, or a drama <coughs> organization, a lot of times they'll be organizing, uh, you know, conferences that involve teachers and schools from across whatever state they're in. Um, so we're looking at ways also to provide those organizations with this platform uh, at a subsidized or even at a free cost, and that we really can reach a lar large swath of, uh, uh, of teachers all at once. I, don't, I missed the beginning, so maybe you talked about this, but I, would, um, I think it's been beneficial to hear sometimes, and I'd like to hear kind of your, your whole journey, like how you got to what your product is now. Because I think sometimes we, we see a little bit like, okay, this is who we are, and everyone kind of assumes, oh, this is what they must have always been. But I think that, you know, where you started, you know, three, how many ever years ago, and, the, and how you kind of got to this, and what made those decisions for you, and kind of, in your, just your pivot story. Sure, yeah. So uh, we started uh, actually with a previous startup uh, back in 2015 uh, that was more in the travel space uh, with. The idea was to sell it to, to tour operators, and uh, we we decided that uh, it was really in our best interest to uh, expand to sort of a much larger uh, audience. So uh, in 2016, we actually started working on this current startup, and uh, you know, one of my favorite analogies to starting a startup is like you're trying to climb a mountain, and you know, there's a bunch of different paths you could go and you don't know exactly which one's the right one, so you just go up one, and then you can spend a few months going up, and then you realize that there's a dead end, and 
you actually need to go back down and try something else. So, you know, that's basically what we what we did, and we, you know, trying the big big nonprofit organizations, uh, you know, uh, different types of uh, organizations, and we realized that, you know, in marketing and in in uh, product development, y you can't build any sort of strategy when you're, you know, we had organizations that were using us for. Uh, different types of conferences and for trivia nights and for bike rides and all these different things and obviously when you you know have these kinds of UK use cases that are so different uh, you can't you don't know you know <laughs> where where to start but just to give you an example even I-10 was thinking about using it you know, within their types you know because they also have you know group programs group experiences things like that in a little bit of a different way uh, but obviously their needs are completely different than, than something else so uh, we decided actually this year to uh, take a look, take stock of sort of what we built. Uh, like I said in the beginning, you just don't have enough data points to really make an informed decision about what you uh, are going to do. And we decided that, you know, based on who was currently using the platform and who was benefiting from, from the most and who was sort of, which, which was the biggest market that was underserved, we really saw that it was educators and schools uh, that, had, that had these issues. I would like to add. Can you? Okay. Uh, I would like to add that uh, basically we are from the beginning put the experience in the main subject that we wanted to tackle. Our platform category is a group experience management. So at the beginning we were tempted a little bit of looking to the travel agents or to the travel industry promising people we will provide you the best experience of your life. However, what we found that basically all of this uh, uh, need more the operational, the back end uh, uh, technology, more or at least uh, they will not. They, it will be more difficult for them to deal with the real experience because they are businessmen that need to do the operation and the financial aspect. Then. We went also to talk to the non-profit organization and we believed, okay, now they will bring. And basically what happened is that they are dealing with all this experience from sales point. How to get their donors, how to get, so it's much more sales person than experience. And coming to the education system, we found and what basically the original intent, how we improve the experiential a, you know, experience, education, or any type of experience by having a better management and user-friendly, and all that experiences that basically are much more important to educators than to the other sections that we involve. So this is kind of a bit of the pivot, but it's not the pivot, it's, we had always the same idea, but we tested several sector or segments and understood basically what definitely is a product market fit. You mentioned that, I'll take the next question. You mentioned that you're, you're looking to raise money and uh, what, what do you intend to do with that? Is this more, I mean, are you going to, I mean, it seems like you've got a finished product and so it looks like the development, you're you know, at least where, at least at a good spot or is it more to go marketing or, you know, how would you use this? Yeah, so uh, the way we sort of look at it is, first of all, uh, customer success because we realize that, you know, you got to have happy customers and you got to have customers that use it and that understand, you know, that are, you got to prod them, especially in the beginning, to, to, to use it in the, in the best way. Uh, but we're, we're definitely looking at um, uh, spending uh, probably half on, like I said, customer success, but also marketing and, and some sales. Uh, and then also uh, about 30% 30, 30 of it we're looking at also development because while we have a working product that's in use, uh, there's a difference between that and someone just sort of picking it up and using it and understanding it without holding their hand. Yeah. Uh, and to get to that point, you know, there, it does involve uh, a considerable amount of development and iteration and uh, you know, just sort of refining the edges. First off, great presentation. Uh, really like the idea behind the product um, to the point where I'm actually going to recommend it to a nonprofit I do consultation work with. Um, I really appreciate that you brought up that you do still need some hand holding because I felt like I needed somebody to hold my hand a bit. Um, I'd love to hear more about the teacher network that you talked about and what that 
is going to, what the purpose of that's going to be and how it's going to serve those teachers effectively. Yeah, so uh, teachers are very networked and connected already. Uh, and I think that you know, if you look at teachers who use, edu uh, who use technology, uh, they're, they're sort of, uh, you see them on Twitter, you see them online in different avenues and conferences, and they're, they, they're very influential to other teachers. Uh, and I think that we can build something similar with teachers that are passionate about, you know, experiential education and things like that. Uh, especially in, you know, today's world where, you know, you, you, you have somewhat of a trend to, you know, you have VR goggles and you have all these things that, uh, you know, you're able to sit in your classroom and, and experience Washington, D.C., but uh, you really do get a sense from, from teachers and also from students that we've talked to that, there's nothing like actually being there. Uh, and I think that if you uh, remove a lot of barriers that currently sort of get in the way uh, and you get other teachers to get other teachers excited about it and give them ideas and make the process easy and you know share tips and ideas, then you what? And as you saw, one of the problems for teacher is a cost and how the Always they think, what can we do in order to reduce the cost? Can we do it by yourself, by themselves, and not to go through the agent and you know the margin of 20% up? So if they explore it as a one platform, an infrastructure that actually provides the tools, collaboration and communication tools, once this itinerary and the idea will be on, the, on this platform, uh, uh, teachers will be able to to pick up specific itineraries, for example, and transfer it to their account. And as from that moment, basically they have the initial infrastructure to start working and doing by themselves without the need or, or with you know the travel agent if they don't need it because it's already part of their account, the new experience, and going forward to. Something else just to mention about the cost, uh, a, a big reason why uh, a lot of teachers, it's either very expensive or they end up not doing it is because they might not be able to get enough interest from, from students and parents in their school. So for example, the, this, the trip to Chicago uh, for Parkway Central was actually students from Parkway Central, Parkway West, high schools and middle schools. So there's a lot of collaboration and management that goes along with that, but you can imagine that with that kind of network, a, a teacher from rural Kansas could link up with a teacher in, in, you know, in suburban Chicago that are going to New York and they could even save money because they're sort of linking up together. So there's a lot of different things that a network like this sort of allows that otherwise you wouldn't be able to really, to really have. Sure, yeah, that's definitely a, a big aspect of, of being able to collect a lot of this data, a lot of these different data points throughout, you know, from the very beginning when they're, you know, te you know what are teachers even searching for? What are they looking for? And obviously that data is very valuable to vendors themselves to understand, uh, but also for the other teachers to be able to understand sort of what what's hot and what's, what's happening. Um, luckily on our team we have, uh, 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 a lad who uh, is did his PhD in electrical and computer engineering, and his background is he really was on AI machine learning. So you know, he's very very knowledgeable about a lot of uh, a lot of different aspects like that. So uh, I think it really gives us a leg up uh, in terms of planning to use it for the next. I mean, in the future, as the data will be accumulated and aggregated, and we really will have the database. Definitely, we. We are planning, we are not announcing it, but we are planning and thinking what to do about it in all the recommendation and all kind of the AI machine learning aspect. 
All right, I'll take the last question. No. Uh, Sorry, man. <laughs> Keep it brief. Very <laughs> good. Yeah. No pressure. Yeah, seriously. Great presentation. Um, really enjoyed it. I just wondered if you were going to be using um, social media. I noticed there isn't any Facebook, Twitter, anything on your uh, website concerning that. Uh, yeah, so um, obviously uh, marketing hasn't been, up until now, uh, it hasn't necessarily been our focus. Uh, like I said, you know, in the beginning you're trying to figure out what you are, who you are. You know, in, in my personal opinion, if you start doing too much buzz and marketing too early, then you start confusing a lot of people. People are like, well, you were this yesterday, now you're this today. And, you know, and, and, and you know, the followers that you might have won't be relevant, you know? So for us, it was important to sort of stay away from that. Now we're definitely gonna be ramping that up. And a lot of content marketing. Uh, we have a lot of uh, research uh, that's, that's been done about, you know, the benefits and, and, and things like that. So we've already started accumulating that information that we're gonna turn into a lot of, you know, content marketing, and digital marketing to teachers, but then also to parents, to, to administrators, to superintendents, and to a lot of different people within uh, this whole uh, vast network of, of education. So final question, what can the community do for you? Well, that's a great question. <laughs> Uh, so the community can definitely help us out by uh, making introductions to people that they know, whether it's nonprofits, whether it's you know superintendents, uh, principals, teachers, individual teachers. Uh, I was on the Bourbon Friday show last week or two weeks ago, uh, and Nick, the host, actually introduced me to his mom, who's a teacher out in uh, St. Charles. So we had a conversation with her, and she's looking to you know bring it into the school. What we really want to do is create a no-brainer type of situation for teachers and schools. Uh, like I said, it's free for them to use, so, uh, you know, we're trying to, part of, the, part of the process of, you know, the, the product development is making it so, even for short field trips that, you know, could only be three or four hours of work for the teacher to do, make it so that when they go on to Explority and just, you know, do what they need to do, obviously it's much less than that. To three hours, so it, it, it really creates a net win. Uh, but any and all network, you know, in, in uh, two people's networks, so introductions, things like that, uh, would be very, very beneficial. I'd be happy to talk to anyone afterwards or, or even later. And although we have already schools uh, from coast to coast, uh, we have decided strategically that while we are based in St. Louis, while the ecosystem is, you know, going here, we definitely would like that our marketing effort and building the regional infrastructure, I would say, of Explority would be, in, would be in St. Louis. That St. Louis will be one of the regions that will enjoy Explority from scratch. It will be a beneficial for us to work with the local teachers, students, and of course administration, and for them to be exposed to such a, a tool already in this academic year. because. It's very important to move quickly. Usually all these trips and the experiences are planned forward. So as we are becoming you know, more people are aware about us and start in, uh, implementing us or you know, being involved with Explority as early in the academic year, it will help also to already to uh, accomplish the, this year. So this is why we need the help but some urgency with the help in order to do it quickly as we will be able to catch this academic year of 19 and 20. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you.